Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So last week it came out from a producer who worked on Yours Truly with Ariana Grande that several of the songs that ended up being on the album were initially intended for Jordan Sparks on her third album. And I don't know the context of how this news came out, you know, whether it was in an interview or a podcast or what have you, but it's been all over Twitter for the last couple days. So I did think that would be interesting to look into more so because, you know, we know Yours Truly as an album that sort of jumpstarted Ariana Grande's career as a solo artist outside of Victorious. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm not sure if we're at the point yet where some younger people might be familiar with Jordan Sparks, but I myself was even kind of young when she won American Idol. She won the sixth season back in 2007 at age 17, becoming the youngest American Idol winner in history. And for a time after her win, Jordan did see a lot of commercial success with her music. Months after winning Idol, Jordan released her self-titled debut album. It contained several hits, including Tattoo, One Step at a Time, and No Air, a collaboration with Chris Brown. No Air peaked at number three on the Hot 100 and was nominated for a Grammy for Best Pop Collaboration with Vocals and currently is the third best-selling single from an American Idol contestant. Jordan's album itself peaked at number 10 on the Billboard 200. Jordan's sophomore album, Battlefield, debuted at number seven with the title track peaking at number 10. This made Jordan Sparks the first American Idol contestant to have their first five singles chart in the top 20 of the Hot 100. Jordan also did some work for Disney, recording a cover of Beauty and the Beast for the DVD re-release and appearing in an episode of The Sweet Life on Deck. She also worked with Big Time Rush, featuring on one of their songs and appearing in an episode of their Nickelodeon show. Jordan played herself in her appearance on both shows. Around this time, Jordan made her Broadway debut playing Nina in In the Heights. In 2012, Jordan made her film acting debut in the remake of Sparkle, a film about a fictional Motown girl group's rise to fame. The film was loosely based on Diana Ross and the Supremes. Around this time, Jordan announced she was working on her third album. She stated it would have a more R&B feel and less of a pop sound. She also said seven of the songs were already completed. However, Jordan's album wouldn't be released for years and she blamed her label for the delay. At this time, she was no longer with Jive and was now signed with RCA Records. Jordan said that RCA was using her role in Sparkle as an excuse to continuously delay her album and claimed there was no room in the schedule to properly promote it. She also stated she was looking for other avenues to get her music out. So obviously around this time and a little bit before, Ariana was working on and then promoting her debut album, Yours Truly, which came out in August of 2013. We now know that according to Harmony Samuels, who co-executive produced Yours Truly, that Jordan Sparks was the so-called originator of the album. He and Jordan co-wrote The Way, along with Seven Streeter and two other writers. The Way was originally written about Jason Derulo, who Jordan was dating at the time, and meant to be on the delayed third album. I was at a party, uh, it was actually like Puff's party, and um, they were playing a bunch of hip-hop records. And I think Mick Mill had a record called Amen yeah. at the time, and it was bumping so hard, and it was just like it had everybody up on their feet. And I was like, I wonder what a girl would sound like on something like this. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And basically, it taught me like you can make records and not everybody you make it for means it's going to be a number one hit on them. Sure. But it might be for someone else. And sure. the funny thing is, Ariana Grande wasn't even in my sights yeah. when I made the record. Yeah. I didn't even know who she was. Um, it was for Jordan Sparks. And then all of a sudden, two years later, it's Ariana Grande's and it's like a huge hit. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, like, I literally have a Judas Box version. <laughs> that works out well. Interesting, man. Right, that's how, you know, because she, she co-wrote on it. I don't know how I knew Seven Streeter worked on the way, but didn't know about Jordan, because there are interviews of her from the time period talking about it. Samuels does give Ariana the credit of coming up with the idea of putting Mac Miller on the record. The way ended up being a hit for Ariana. The song has gone three times platinum since its release and peaked at number nine on the Hot 100. Snippets of Jordan's demo are online, and she's posted some of the snippets herself. And though it is disappointing if the label didn't let her put the record out on her own, she does now have another platinum record to her name because of her writing credit on the song. According to Samuels, Jordan's third album was supposed to take a similar direction to yours truly, he claimed. While I was doing that album for Fantasia, I was working on those records for Ariana Grande, but they weren't Ariana Grande records, they were Jordan Sparks records. Jordan Sparks is the originator of those records and the blueprint behind who Ari is now. My vision was for Jordan to be that person. And I've never really thought about the fact that if a label won't put an artist's music out, the producer suffers too. It's obviously a given, but I feel like we usually center the recording artists in these conversations because they're the face of the issue. Samuels also stated the reason RCA delayed Jordan's album is because they didn't see the value of the music he was producing for her, and so they wanted Jordan to go in a different direction. 
Which, of course, if he's telling the truth, this does mean that it wasn't necessarily a budget or scheduling issue, as RCA had allegedly told Jordan. Samuels did give Ariana credit for what she added to the songs that he produced for Yours Truly. He stated, Kudos to Ari. She did a lot of work on that album. She didn't just cut those records. She put Mac Miller on those records. She called Big Sean. She had those relationships. We worked extremely hard together. She deserves all the success. While they would have been similar to an extent, I do wonder how different Jordan and Ariana's albums would have been, though. Because Jordan stated she wanted her album to be more R&B pop influenced, and yours truly does, of course, have that vibe. But I do wonder if Jordan would have gone for the more retro doo-wop influence for this era the same way that Ariana did. Because I do feel like that was a little bit influenced by her personal tastes. I could see Jordan taking a more modern 2000s R&B direction with the album, essentially a more R&B version of her previous music like she said she wanted. I also wonder what the album would have been called had Jordan released it or if there was ever a working title for it. Because Ariana herself named the album Yours Truly, stating the record sounded like a love letter. Ariana's debut album went through a lot of changes before she arrived at what became Yours Truly. She didn't like Put Your Hearts Up, which was initially intended to be the album's lead single. Ariana wasn't fond of the bubblegum pop sound of it and didn't want her whole album to sound that way so the single wouldn't have fit on the album. For the album, she wanted to take a more urban pop 90s direction, inspired by a lot of the music she grew up listening to, and also said she took inspiration from artists including Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, Amy Winehouse, and Alicia Keys. And then by the summer of 2012, Ariana also said the album would have that more 50s, 60s doo feel that we obviously came to see realized on Yours Truly. She said in an interview, My album is going to be pop, but it's also old school inspired and has a little bit of a 1950s feel to it. She also claimed, my album is throwback Motown. It's like modern Motown-inspired pop and soul. And the 90s doo-wop and Motown influences are all present on yours truly. In regards to Jordan, I wonder if the initial Motown inspiration came from her role in Sparkle or if she just personally loved Motown. Not to say that yours truly or Harmony songs were inspired directly by Sparkle, but I think it's interesting that Jordan was linked to two Motown-inspired projects around the same time. And all that's to say, that's even if it was the case that her version of Yours Truly even did have a Motown inspiration to it. Only five of the 12 songs on Yours Truly were produced by Harmony Samuels. Those songs are right there, Piano, Better Left Unsaid, Almost Is Never Enough, and of course, The Way. Piano to me is the song that sounds the most like what we knew of Jordan Sparks' music at the time. To me, it sounds slightly like a more upbeat version of One Step at a Time, so I can get exactly why Harmony created the song for Jordan. It does seem like the lyrics were probably reworked to some extent, though, because Ariana has a writing credit on piano. The only Harmony Samuels produced song Ariana doesn't have a credit on is The Way, so it seems like she at least had some input on the songs once they were given to her. Then, of course, the other songs on Yours Truly were created mostly by Ariana's team of writers and producers, as well as herself. Her longtime friends and collaborators, Tommy Brown and Victoria Monet, helped write and produce for the album as well. Songs like Popular Song were personal editions of Ariana's that fit very well with the sound of the album. Though it is technically Mika's song and she's the featured artist, Ariana still decided to include the song on Yours Truly. The song, of course, is inspired by Wicked, which Ariana has always loved, so it's cool to see things come full circle for her on that front. Fun fact, but Priscilla Renee, now known as Money Long, helped write Popular Song. Yours Truly debuted at number one on the Billboard 200. Critics praised Ariana for the 90s R&B sound of the album, which of course earned her the comparisons to Mariah Carey that were common at the beginning of her career. The album was critically acclaimed, and the overall consensus was that it was a strong effort and a modern pop and R&B infusion with some retro additions. By the summer of 2013, Jordan announced she'd finished her third album and that it would be released in the fall. Previously, she said the album would come in August, around the same time that Yours Truly dropped. To create buzz for the album, Jordan put out the single Skipping a Beat, It has a cute R&B pop sound, and you can hear a late 90s, early 2000s influence. And then aside from that, the electric sound in it was very characteristic of the early 2010s era of pop music. Like aside from Ariana, it also kind of reminds me of Fifth Harmony. A lot of the pop and pop adjacent girls are making music that sounded like this at the time, but it was very fun. By 2014, Jordan had left RCA and signed with Louder Than Life, a subsidiary label owned by Sony Music. Because she was no longer with RCA, Jordan had to scrap the third album she'd already completed and record new material. She put out the mixtape by Felicia and announced her album was now planned for release in 2015. The album, called Right Here Right Now, came out in the summer of 2015. At this time, it had been six years since her last album, and Jordan said she wanted to show how she'd grown over the years within her music. Several of the songs do deviate from the earliest iteration of her third album, which is when the songs that ended up on Yours Truly were made. 
However, some of them, like Boys in the Hood, do seem like they would have fit among the songs that Harmony produced for her. Jordan said the album was inspired by 90s R&B and cited Mariah and Whitney as influences. In addition, the album was her first foray into urban rhythmic contemporary music. At the time, this would have been mostly characterized by that sort of hip-hop-infused R&B sound that was so popular. A perfect example of this is her song Double Tap. It kind of sounds like if 2015 were a song, with the Instagram references, the anti-drop minimalistic chorus, and of course, the 2 Chains feature. Critics gave Right Here Right Now favorable reviews, mostly of the opinion that the album did represent musical growth for Jordan. In their review, the New York Daily News stated, At 25, Sparks finally sounds like a woman, one in control of both her voice and her character. The most direct role model for the project seems to be Mariah Carey's better urban records of the 90s and early 2000s. Carey fans may consider the best of Right Here the stuff they wished for years that Mariah would cut. That hybrid and Sparks' new maturity allows her to find her voice as well as a potential new role. While many fans have called Ariana Grande the new Mariah, right now makes Sparks sound like the true heir. Despite the favorable reviews, Right Here Right Now peaked at number 161 on the Billboard 200. The album was considered a commercial failure for Jordan, especially compared to the performance of her first two albums. However, Right Here Right Now did peak at number 11 on the R&B and Hip Hop albums chart. On the channel, I've covered several cases of one or even multiple songs being intended for one artist, but another artist releases it. And like I've said in those videos, just because songs were hits for one person, it doesn't mean we can automatically assume they would have been hits for the other person. People put their own spin on things, so it's nothing new. And I'm not sure if this has ever been a case with the majority of an album, though, but I wouldn't be surprised to find out that this has happened before. It still is disappointing that Jordan Sparks didn't get to release her album because it seemed like it was just RCA that didn't want it out. I just feel like this is another case where I do sympathize with the artist because they got cheated out of what could have been a successful album for them because of their label. But like I said, we can't predict the future, but regardless, someone's artistic freedom was stifled. And so while I do think that I might be fair in some regards to say that Jordan Sparks was the blueprint for yours truly or whatever, you know, Jordan would have called the album had she released it, I don't know if it's entirely fair to say that Jordan Sparks was the blueprint for who Ariana Grande is now, 10 years after that album came out. Because while two people and two artists can, you know, sort of start in a very similar space or area, they can diverge and end up in completely separate points, you know, years after the fact. And again, Less Than Half of Yours truly was produced by Harmony Samuels, so it's entirely possible to think that if Jordan was able to release the album on her own, it would have been, you know, seven other different songs on the album along with the five songs that Harmony made. And I'm assuming that that might be true considering Jordan had said a couple times that she'd already completed the album, but just had not been able to release it. And then it also could be entirely possible that once it was, you know, made clear that Jordan wasn't going to be releasing this third album, that Harmony intended to give all of the songs he made for Jordan to Ariana Grande, and then she only selected five of them. So I'm not sure what's true and what's not, but I did just want to raise the fact that both of those or either of those things could be the case. You know, I'd always sort of wondered what happened with Jordan Sparks in her career, and I just assumed that when I made the American Idol or Psycho label video, which I didn't forget about, by the way, that I would find out what happened to her then because I just assumed it was a case of, you know, American Idol contestant wins, they don't get the best record deal, and then, you know, they're trapped in limbo for years and it stifles their career. But it seems like this time around, again, it was RCA, allegedly. As always, thank you so very much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you can stick around for more. Also, make sure you follow me on Twitter if you want to keep up with me there. And if you'd like to become a channel member, the link is in the video's description. Again, thank you so very much for watching. I love you so very much, and we'll see you so very soon. Bye-bye!